Okay, so I'm going to go over the data analysis part of it now. Um, and so I'm going to use some example sequences because I don't have the sequences from this uh, PCR run back. Um, so uh, here I have one for a mushroom called Cymosabe. They're little tiny mushrooms that grow on wood, very well rotted wood. And uh, this is what the example chromatogram looks like. So you go through the Sanger sequencing, the laser scans all the ends of the DNA fragments, and then it puts together something like this. So at the end, here you have some kind of junk, uh, and then you end up you know, with all these different bases, and you can see how well the laser reads them. You have these nice clean peaks. Some of them are a little short, but they're still uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom in. Quality score 59. So you want a quality score of above 20, ideally. And you'll run through and you can see everything basically looks like these nice, clean, sharp peaks. And then we scroll all the way to the end of the sequence. And then we see a couple of these. Now N just means that it, the software didn't know what base to call it. So um, in this case, uh, you know, quality scores are just too low. So here's an example of a bad sequence. So this is Satharello that I did. And uh, you can see that the sequence is just completely contaminated with all these small peaks. You zoom in, look at the quality score. The quality score is just 16. Um, and then you'll see it's very jumbled. You'll start scrolling through. You see this kind of mess. Uh, it keeps calling, uh, miscalling the base pairs. You get another N. Um, you know, this is a, an example of kind of a crappy sequence. You might be able to get good data off of it, but it's not going to be ideal. And of course, there's some that are far, far worse than this. Definitely not the worst sequence I've seen. So uh, how do we analyze this data? So now that we've looked at the sequence, we see it looks good. I'm going to just uh, select from the first base pair that it calls correctly and highlight the whole thing. Cut it off right there. Copy. And then I'm going to go to Blast. Click Nucleotide Blast right here. I'm going to go into this box. And I'm just going to paste it. Very simple. I'm not going to change uh, any of the other uh, settings here. And then I'm just going to hit Blast. My uh, camera is trying to focus. There we go. So I'm going to watch this number. Sometimes it takes a while. I've had it take minutes. I hope it really doesn't take minutes today. we go. So the first thing we see is our alignment scores. So this basically just shows how well your, your group of, of DNA overlaps with all the other sequences. So it looks like all the top hits are really well aligned. They all line up nicely. Then we're going to look over here. And so our top hit Cymosabe reducta. Uh, it's got a max score of 912. Uh, that's based on a bunch of different characteristics. Really what I'm looking for is the percent identity. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that sequence. That's going to bring me to the pairwise alignment. What you can also do is literally just scroll down. 
And you'll see there's a lot of stuff that it matches you up against. So I'm going to go to this first one. And I'm going to look at it. And I'm going to try to find where all the bases are different. So I do Control F and I search for this character, a pipe, and then space. And then it'll highlight everywhere where the sequence is different. Now you'll notice it's different up here. It's also different down here. But over here in the middle, it's mostly the same. And so why don't you guys try to figure out why that is based on what you've uh, learned so far about this. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Then I can further go in. Look at the sequence uh, information. I can see you know, all this stuff. I can see who the authors are. So, looks like it's these folks here. And they submitted it to a journal. And you can see uh, that this was collected in Italy from DNA fruit, or from a uh, mushroom fruit body. And then it gives you another um, glance at the sequence. So beyond that, you can do all kinds of cool things with the data. Uh, another thing I want to show you uh, is that some people, when they submit their uh, sequence, they put an iNaturalist ID number in there. And so the cool thing about that is I can click on that. I'm going to go ahead and copy that number. I'm going to go to iNaturalist. Um, I'm just going to click on a random one and then I'm going to replace that with the other number. And so now I can see, so this was collected in Indianapolis. Uh, and now I can see pictures of the actual mushroom that was collected. There's a ruler there, I can zoom in. See what it looks like up close, it's not a great photo. And then you can see everybody has identified it. There's the DNA barcode, all this other stuff. So another cool thing that you can do with all this data here is uh, you can click this box on all the sequences you want to download and then uh, you go to this website phylogeny.fr it's a, uh, a French website um, and you can go click on phylogeny analysis you do do the one click, and then you would uh, basically upload all your all your different uh, sequences here, and uh, you click submit, and then what it'll do is it'll use the molecular data to do a bunch of different analyses, and then put everything in a uh, phylogenetic tree. So this is one that I did with uh, Tubaria. It's a genus of mushrooms. Um, commonly grown wood chips, and um, I set the outgroup as Flamula alnicola, something completely unrelated, and then put all the Tuberia sequences that I could find into this program. And all the ones highlighted are ones that I sequenced, which have their own iNaturalist observations. And so I can see that the ones that I found separate out into a bunch of different trees, um, a bunch of different groups. Uh, some of them don't have great support levels, um, but some of them like this one is a, you know, almost a hundred. Uh, and so, yeah, a lot of these will end up, end up being, you know, potentially different or new species.
so this is a way that you can use, um, you know, community science to basically uh, solve some interesting uh, problems. It's pretty cool.